The Head Chef is a series of videos on how to identify, use and cook with wild foods. I've come to the village of St Bravels in the Royal Forest of Dean because there's a castle here that was built in the 1100s. And that means the surrounding country will have been farmed for a long time. And that means there will be ancient hedges. And where there are ancient hedges, you'll find a great variety of wild foods. I'll show you just how old this hedge is. Look at how many shades of green there are. Each shade is a different species. Now take a look at this one. Can you see it's all one shade? That's because it's all one species. What to do is count the number of species in a 30 meter stretch. That's from the foreground to the arch over the road in the background. For each species you can roughly assume the hedge is 100 years old. There's one, that's holly. And there's two, that's hawthorn. There's a third, that's yew. And there's a fourth, that's hazel. Actually, there are eight species in this 30 meter stretch. So that means that this hedge is about 100 years old. And that this one is about 800 years old. And that means that I can be pretty sure that people from St Bravels were gathering exactly what I'm going to gather from this very same hedge during the Crusades. When it's that old, it's going to be very diverse. I've counted 28 species of plant in a 10 metre stretch of hedge and on the verge. That's from the foreground to where I'm crouching. Of those, 20 are good for food, 3 are good for medicine, and 3 would make you sick if you ate them. That's why you need a good identification book. This is Roger Phillips' photographic guide to the flowering plants of Britain. Remember lots of things flower, including trees, and you'll find them all in here. For things as important as food and medicine, it's best to choose a photographic guide over one which has artist drawings. With those, you're depending on the skill of the artist, and that's not always good enough. On the subject of the three plants that would make you sick, nobody knows everything about this subject, and I'll be straight with you. I'm not sure about Yellow Archangel, but I haven't had three independent sources say that you can eat it. And the name makes me a bit suspicious. The name of a plant can be a clue as to what it's likely to do to you, and I'm not planning on meeting any archangels just yet. I'm going to show you a handful of the most interesting plants on the verge. In following episodes, I'll show you how to identify them properly, use them, and cook with them. This is ground elder. Three leaves at the top, and two pairs of leaves below them. The Romans introduced it as a herb, and you'll find it all over the place. It's got a good flavour, just eat it raw in a salad. These are ramsons, which is wild garlic. It grows in huge swathes, and you can normally smell it long before you see it. You can eat it all, leaves, flowers, and bulb using it exactly the same as commercial garlic, the advantage being that this is fresh and it's free. This is garlic mustard, sometimes called Jack by the Hedge. It's around for a good couple of months. This is brilliant stuff to cook with. It's like a mix between spring onions and garlic. It's got a great taste and of course it can't be bought. This one's meadow sweet. The flowers can be used to flavour drinks and in fact it used to be used to flavour beer. It's got a very distinctive red stem with leaves directly opposite one another. It smells like germaline when you crush it. I've seen it dried and smoked like tobacco. In fact, an old name for it is poor man's baccy. This is an interesting one. See the little pink flowers? That's Herb Robert, the most amazing wound healer. Grows all over the place. I got quite a nasty dog bite, three punctures. This is the ferocious animal that did it. Got a bit overexcited with the hose. Herb Robert is a styptic, which stops the bleeding, and it's an astringent, which pulls the tissue together. I put a poultice on it, on the wooden, for three days. Unbelievable. Three little red marks was all that was left. There are a lot of plants for healing wounds, and just like the dangerous ones, sometimes the clues in the name. It must have been handy around here in the past. This is border country, and the Sheriff of Gloucestershire used to pay for a knight and other officers to stay in that castle. Another couple worth knowing. This is hogweed. Got to be careful identifying it, as it looks like some other plants that you don't want to eat. The shoots of this before they unfurl make fantastic eating. And finally, comfrey. Great tasting. For me, best used as the main ingredient in a soup. The flowers can vary in colour, and it grows in big clumps like in the foreground here. Back at the castle, in the old moat, 
looks a bit like a pagan offering. Those are three that I would say are really worth getting to know and knowing how to cook with, and that's something I can help you with. In following episodes, you'll find out all about these and other great wild foods, how to safely identify them, cook with them, and enjoy them.